Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today, we're going to be talking about the newest album from Death Grips, called Year of the Snitch. So here's my biggest observation when it comes to Death Grips from being appreciative of their sound, but mostly outside the fandom. At some point, Death Grips was going to take a step outside of their frequent trolling and just outright alienate or drive away some of that audience. Hell, you can make the argument that way back in 2013, they already kind of did it with government plates. And while the Death Grips fandom has an impressive tolerance for bullshit, if Jenny Death had not been as strong as it was, I'm not sure they would have gotten away with so much for so long. And the other unfortunate factor is that Death Grips really aren't the only ones pushing the boundaries in this space of experimental music anymore. Noisier hip hop is far more common and accepted than it used to be. And while I would argue Death Grips are still relatively close to the cutting edge, even fans are starting to notice that ground was getting retread on albums like Bottomless Pit, which for the record is an album I still quite like to this day. It's it's a great record. And yet even with that, the initial buzz I've been hearing for Year of the Snitch has been, uh, mixed, to say the least, with no clear consensus surrounding what may have gone awry this time. And thus, I had very little idea what was even coming on Year of the Snitch, even despite what one could typically argue is one of the most traditional and straightforward rollouts for a new album that Death Grips has ever had. So, alright. What do we get with Year of the Snitch? <laughs> okay, so this album is odd. And it's odd in the way where I'm not exactly surprised that Death Grips fans have been more on the fence about it than ever before, because it almost seems like it was designed to get under their skins more than anybody else. I'd like to say that this is the album where Death Grips finally become self-aware, but the truth is, they've always been self-aware about themselves and their fan base. And you could definitely read this record as a natural continuation of themes that were established on what was built on Bottomless Pit. But where that album had more of a balance between apathy pathetic contempt and traditional Death Grips nihilism, Year of the Snitch pushes both sides of that balance further than ever before, and then we get to a truth that might as well deconstruct everything Death Grips has put on record beforehand, so yeah, there's some loaded stuff going into this album. And the interesting thing is while Death Grips really does take their time getting to this place, they do lay the foundations as early as the opening track Death Grips is online, with lines right after the title implying how much they gorge themselves on their cult of personality and have reaped considerable rewards out of that. And while there's always been a fleshy, debased hedonism that's run through Death Grips really all of their material, this might seem to be the first album where they actually seem to be really enjoying it. Or at least the headline rush that comes with getting it. But this raises an inherent contradiction. Because Death Grips and MC Ride specifically, they built their careers on wild, unhinged paranoia, depression, and nihilism. With Jenny Death being the most explicit case for artistic suicide and a dark rebirth I've seen on an album in the 2010s. But holding the balance between that and the euphoric rewards of reaping all the success for making that music, that's a dangerous game. And it highlights a very dangerous lie at the core of Death Grips' most recent output. Consider how MC Ride describes death and decay on previous albums now compared to Flies, which might have been bloody and feral before is now ossified and rotting and stagnant. And thus, the satanic flourish is a black paint they almost feel token, or how there's real tension in getting mined on Linda's in custody, a reference to the key witness who resulted in the conviction of Charles Manson in the early 70s. So, Death Grips knows that their time is limited, and thus the midsection of this album becomes a grotesque hedonistic shit show. They literally call the song shit show, but you can tell it's starting to wear almost a little bit thin, mostly because Death Grips are very much aware that their brand of success has never quite been as opulent as some of their contemporaries in this space. Go to ha 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 and the flexing almost feels like a parody. And thus, they are left with a dilemma, aptly captured by an intro from the director of the first two Shrek movies, because of course they're gonna play into the meme here. But then the album gets pretty real around the fear, when it's a song that is screaming for them to actually take that leap kill something, someone, beat themselves or somebody else, and MC Ride doesn't do it. That fear holds them back. It's an ending that expects you to be disappointed and say, what, that's it? And then after the outro track, Death Grips comes back to fill in that blank on Disappointed. They know what their cult is going to think about this, so they outright give away the game more than they ever have before. If there's a snitch, it's Death Grips snitching on themselves and laying bare exactly what the fans have invested in, taking their own meme, their own capitalistic framework, and turning the joke back on you. And I'll say it outright. 
I'm a real sucker for this sort of recursive, self-aware middle finger to the audience. Especially as it shows how smart MC Ride is in deconstructing his genre and art in the relationship to the system that puts it out. And a record like this takes real courage, because I don't know how Death Grips continues their traditional style after this. Now granted, some of my appreciation comes from just being a casual fan outside of the Die Hard crew, but given how I was more invested when Fall Out Boy did Save Rock and Roll and Nine Inch Nails did Hesitation Marks, the latter being the same sort of nihilistic deconstruction, and the former being the middle finger to the fans, I just appreciate the artistry of it all, and Death Grips are really sixth the landing here. Now all that being said, there is a method to approaching this in a way that doesn't compromise the sound, and if there's a place where Death Grip stumbles, it's here. Now don't get me wrong, I appreciate how so many of these songs are simply Death Grips sampling and recycling themselves to further drive home the recycling of ideas over and over again across album after album, and I can even get on board with the increasingly ragged and disjointed hardcore punk elements rammed in when it comes to song structure and time signatures and cadence, which of course the most slapdash that it's ever been, which kind of makes sense when the whole system is falling apart. But one of the trickiest things with deconstructive art is ensuring the art is actually of quality and man alive, year the snitch is uneven. Part of this is MC Ride. Continuing in the wake of Bottomless Pit, his bellowing is more restrained than ever, which might fit the increased feelings of alienation designed for the fans, but it also kind of mutes the biggest focal point of charisma for the group, and his detached monotone just is not as interesting, especially when stacked around the vocal filters around the gummy gloss of the keys and the rock elements that keep trying to surge through and give this album some impact, like the waves of borderline tremolo riffs on Death Grips' is Online, or the curdled roar of the metal riffs on Black Paint that kicked ass. And I'll freely admit when this album gets more guitar-driven, like on these songs, or that main noisy riff behind the hooks of Ha 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 and The Fear, or the lo-fi curdled melody bouncing off the melancholic synthesizers of Dilemma, or even the wonky bounce of Disappointed that I kind of groove to, they're by far my favorite moments here. Calling back to the noisy heaviness of Jenny Death, that's a winning formula. I like that side of Death Grips. But then you get the damp splotches of synthesizer and shambling trap skitter of flies, or the lo fi atonal glittering whirs of Linda's in custody that it can never really land on a stable groove, or how fragments like the horn section and the flagrant hardcore shit show, they don't really add much beyond Zach Hill's pretty damn killer drum work, or even the synth heavy streaky, which might be the closest thing Death Grips has come to embracing mainstream, meat-headed, glitchy hip-hop, or maybe even the SoundCloud scene. It never hits a point I would consider outright bad, but Death Grips recycling, Death Grips can get kind of tiresome. And you know what, I'll say it, the fusion of these synthesizers with thicker walls of guitar and more of a punk setting, it's not exactly revolutionary anymore when White Lung beat them to it with Paradise two years ago, and that band actually bothered to include some stable hooks and grooves in an album that I actually like a fair bit more and really deserves more praise. But as a whole, I kind of wish I liked this album more, because as much as I really dig the main concept, the execution's kind of haphazard. And for as much justifiable praise as Death Grips gets for experimentation, when they double down on pulling from earlier projects, as much as I might get the thematic point, it's not really boundary pushing when you're just going back to the boundaries you already pushed. And as such for me, I'm giving this a very solid 7 out of 10 and a recommendation for Death Grips fans more than anybody else. If you're not on board with the group at this point, this album will not change your mind. Mind, but I also expect this to be pretty polarizing for that audience, even beyond this review. And while I kind of appreciate that, I appreciate the trolling going on here, or whatever level of sincerity we're operating on, I think I'm a lot more interested in where Death Grips and MC Ride go from here. Because once you burn and salt your own genre, you're in some uncharted territory. And for Death Grips, that could be exactly what they need. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I imagine, like with every Death Grips review I put out, it's going to be a little bit polarizing my interpretation. Hey, that's kind of to be expected when it comes to lyrics that are as oblique and really open to interpretation as it is. And if I'm wrong here, I'm happy to say it, but we'll see where things go, because I do think this album is something of a larger reveal to the audience. I do kind of believe they did snitch on themselves. But, hey, if you're interested in that, if you want to especially buy the record, link's down there below. And I got the poll up there for y'all to tell me how wrong I am and how this is completely awesome. Although, again, I've seen some of the fan responses. It has not been universally positive here. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in my scheduling process or support this channel, link to my Patreon is right over there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add albums, movies, or even a top ten list to that schedule. 
More details right there. You want to see my schedule? It's on my Instagram. Link down there below. But till then, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.